Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm starting to do some trim boards. I've got the ceiling boards hung up. You can see I've got them hung up all the way around except for this one piece right here. Okay, I've got the whole ceiling hung up, ran out, one piece short, half a piece short right there, okay? So, but I'm doing trim work right now because that's what I can do. You can see I used this scrap piece right here, but it was uh, small enough to where my trim board still covers it. So I'm just showing you that you can do this in a situation like this. If it's close enough, you can use that trim board to go ahead and uh, use that scrap piece right there, you can see. Now, I'm gonna have to get that piece, but you can see what I'm doing with those trim boards down those seams. I'm also gonna run these same trim boards from here to here, from here across to here, from here to here, and from here to there. And then from here, we're gonna extend it all the way over to here, and then I'll do trim around the top as well, all the way around those same trim boards, okay? This is what me explaining it to you. I'm about to go ahead and get all this done, and then I will show you what this trim on the ceiling looks like. In the meantime, since I'm out of those trim boards right now too, I'm gonna to have to make a run to Lowe's later, but I do have some two by fours. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this baseboard right here. I'm just using a, a straight up, just a two by four. I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle here and another 45 degree angle on this board. That way they'll be connected here in the middle. We'll go ahead and paint all this when it's done and it'll match up to those trim boards right there. Pretty darn close. And you can see we still need to do some paint touch ups around the, uh, the edges here. Also, if you've seen the video on how I did the corners That's right. here, I'm going to go over this and sand it, sand that, and I'm going to go ahead and put primer, which is my actual paint, on these uh, windows and all the spots where we worked with it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sand it and prime it. I'm going to go ahead and get all that done, and I will bring you right back. What I'm doing now is taking this box blade and I'm going to cut this room into strips, this carpet, and then I'm going to roll up each section. Now I've cut the carpet here and I've cut it over here and I'm going to roll up these three sections right now. Okay, now you can see all this carpet is gone and the floor is very dirty, but not as dirty as it used to be. And you can see there's still just areas that are dirty underneath that carpet from old pee and skin cells and dirt and your grandma's hair combs stuff that fell off the edge of her toenail. Anyway, there's all that stuff right there down there. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking a broom and I'm gonna sweep inch for inch all the way around. You can see, I'm gonna scoop it all up, dust pan it up, and you're gonna notice there's some staple lines in my case anyway, underneath my carpet. So I'm gonna sweep around all that, mop this up with pine sole, scrub it down with a mop and a broom and a dust pan, scrub all this, get rid of all this mold and this all that junk from the old thing down there on the side of the hillside down there. And over here, we're gonna get all this cleaned up. And I'm gonna screw in this trim board that I've already got pre-cut. It was too late last night, about 11 o'clock at night, uh, but the family's on this side and over there, I couldn't be drilling and hammering. So I got everything pre-cut. Okay, here's my new trim board, the two by fours with the 45 degree angle right here. I'm gonna pre-drill all my holes and I'll show you what I'm using for all that here in a minute. Last thing is, all my trim is up now, and you can see the borders all the way around. I'm gonna have to do um, some painting and a little bit of caulking in a couple of spots. Um, this turned out really nice. Remember there was that big gap. Now there's not a big gap anymore. There's a very, very small gap right here, and I'm gonna put some caulking in right there. You can see it right there. 
not too bad, not too bad. Just a very fine layer of caulking right here. And uh, I did have one split right there as well. So very easy fixes right there. <clears throat> Everything else is looking good. My border right here, you can see down the middle, I wanted to leave one panel right here uh, and go ahead and video this before it's completely done. But I did, I left a spot. You can see I did all the trim boards everywhere, okay? Except for from here over to here. And that's because uh, this panel was missing. But I've nailed all this in here and this panel will slide right into that corner right here and right there. Boop. And it'll be right here. And then I can put my trim here and here, which will go from here all the way across, you can see. So anyway, I'll show you this also at the very end and we will have to paint uh, all those boards white. Okay, but that's what it looks like right now. And that's kind of how all this is falling together. One other thing I want to show you is, uh, let's see here. You can see some of the wires, they are out far enough to where the board can slide out behind it. That makes it a lot easier. But you're probably not going to be dealing with this situation. Uh, this was is kind of a more unique situation. But anyway, I'm sliding that board underneath the wire, you can see. And then over here, there's two wires, and I slid it back behind those wires. Okay. Over here is a wire. And in this case, I put it over to the wire, and then this piece from the wire over to kind of try to hide those lines. And remember, I'm going to be putting caulk in and painting all this white, so it's, it blends in very well. I've done it in the rest of the house, and I'm doing it in this room also because I, I like it. So, anyway, there's that. Our floor patch turned out nice right here from jacking up the house from the old chimney removal project. 300 bricks. There they are sitting right out there. Anyway. I'm gonna get this swept up and mopped, get this trim board tacked and all this stuff that I just mentioned. I'm gonna lift that panel in, put the trim on and get everything, you know, pine sole, bleached, clean. And I will bring you right back for the staples and the tack strips. I'll bet you can do this. Okay, this is round one. I've got the sweeping done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mop this. And I'm, before I mop it, actually, I'm gonna use my little Dewalt blower out there. And I'm gonna blow everything out of, you know, the little micro dusts out of here. And then I'm gonna mop. Okay, it's gonna be really dusty. So get ready for that. Let's dust pan this up and get it out of here. I'm at Lowe's and I've got the, these are one by twos and I'll show you the price on those, but they're like $1.50 each. And here is the ceiling boards that I'm using, $27 and I was one short. So I'm gonna grab that and grab these boards about, should be about 40 bucks. Okay, I've got a bundle of six and a sheet right here. I'm gonna show you the price up here. Here's the boards, you can see, one by two bundles right here, $1.68. Look at that, $1.68, eight foot long. 
great trim boards right here. Look, these are one by threes for two fifty eight. One by fours are three dollars and thirty eight cents. Okay, I'm out here in the Lowe's parking lot. I'm going to show you a little life hack right here. If you have a little car like me, you're going to put your siding out here, and this acts like a little sawhorse. Bring your little Dewalt cordless uh, skill saw. Draw your line where you need your cut. You got to pre measure it at the house before you come to Lowe's. Give it a cut out in the parking lot with the nice sawhorse, and then it'll be able to fit inside your car as well. Thumbs up, buddy. Okay, this little setup right here is my choice so far. I've got other tools that you could use though too, but you can see what that is right there. And it's working really good to pull these staples up because I can kind of scoop it up underneath there and then pry up the staple and do this and that. And then these pliers, once I kind of get underneath it and loosen it, I can grab it and pull it up. And I'll show you an example here after a little bit, but I've just removed all these and you can see what that looks like after you remove all the staples. See, there's all my staples right there. And, uh, oh, she's actually building, she's building her own house while I'm here doing this. Because we are on deadlines. We've got to have this thing done by the first. So, we've only got a few more days to finish this whole room. And, uh, yeah. So, she's building the house, and I'm building the house. And with us together, hopefully we can finish the house. I gotta use my right hand, y'all. <laughs> I'm right-handed. Okay, so I'm scraping off the stuff like that. And then, I'm scooping up underneath it, like this. And then pulling it like that. And there's your staple right there, okay? And I'm gonna do another one, okay? Kind of twisting it, pulling it out like that. One in, twist over, pull it out like that. One over here, one over there, pull it around, okay? And you want to get them out of the wood completely, both sides. If it rusts out, then you need to beat it into the wood or you need to scrape the heck out of it with the back of a hammer. I do that too, like this. If it rusts out, you can scrape it like this, which I'll end up doing anyway, just to make sure that wood is smooth. After I get done sweeping and mopping, I'll go through anything and I'll scrape anything that uh, doesn't feel right with my hand. I'm gonna go inch for inch after cleaning this with my hand. And you can see another way to pull out staples is like this. There's one right there. Pull that out. But you can see that's another way to, to drag them all out. But they have to be not rusted to do that. See, these aren't rusted. Anyway. And then the tack strips, you're gonna use some other tools, something like this, or you could use the same tool like this, and you're gonna get up underneath it and pry it up, or use your hammer and beat that under there and pry it up, okay? And I'll take up those tack strips just the same way. They're all held down by these big uh, nails. There's a big nail right here. And then these are the tack strips. And then there's a nail right there, a nail right there. A nail right here. Did your castle fall down? Yeah. And then you got to pull them up, pull the, where those nails are, get underneath it, and pry them up. And those will come right out. No big deal. I am pulling out these tack strips now, and this is the tool I'm using. Going up underneath those nails, which you can see. I've got a couple set in the side right here, and this is what I meant by there's these big nails like this one and this one to actually go into the plywood and the rest of them are small for the carpet to stick onto. That's all that is and that metal was just some flashing for the carpet around this other flooring or whatever. So you're going to want to put this under those nails and pull them right up and I tap the back side of this with my hammer. Okay, And I don't have my tripod today that's why it's kind of hard for me to video it but it's going to be kind of like this. you know. Pry it out like that, okay? And you can see I've got one right here. I'm gonna hammer it in there and pull that out. But that's all there is to that, okay? Hey, you got your house built back up. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna keep going on these tack strips and I will bring you right back after I've removed all the tack strips and all of these staples. This is basically the last area that I have to work on.
up to pre-drill this area right here and I'm going to show you how I do that right now. What I'm going to do now is take this 2x4 trim right here. You can see I've cut a 45 where they meet right here. It looks really nice. Okay. You can put some caulking in between that, some liquid nail in between these before you screw them down if you want to. But what I'm going to do is go to the right or the left. In my case, I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to put this in place. Make sure there's nothing underneath it. Oh, wait. There's a tack strip right here that somebody got lazy and didn't take off the very last piece. So you don't want to do that because your trim won't be flat. So let's rip that out and then put the trim back. There we go. Round two. Okay, now that I have the trim in place, I'm taking this drill bit right here on the on the Dewalt drill. Okay, it's a counter sinker with a little. Well, it's just a counter sinker drill bit. And then this is the Phillips head, and I'm going to be putting in three-inch screws. Okay, three-inch screws. I've got this out with these two tools, and I'm going to pre-drill a hole right here. Right there. Now, I'm going to take the three inch screw. Okay. Had to do that right handed because I'm right handed. Uh, now I'm going to repeat the same steps over and over again about every foot. Okay, these baseboards are painted now. You can see this is cleaned up a little bit better. Still got to pull these staples. This is painted white now, and you can see what I mean. These are just two by fours. This is only six dollars for this whole thing. And then over here, you can see this is all painted now. And what I'm doing now is showing you on these trim. You can see in another episode where I uh, skim coated this with sheetrock mud. And now all I'm doing is in these areas that I worked on it, take you a wet sponge and go over that and smooth out all the edges right here, just like that. And this was a little bit worse of a spot right here, you can see. I'm gonna do the same thing, take you a wet sponge and go over it all, like this. I'll show you what this looks like after I get done sponging and paint this. But this is the system that I'm doing. And I'm just going to use primer on this to paint this with the cheap from Lowe's PVA primer. It's this right here. This primer right here is $9.99 at Lowe's. Okay, there is the trim right there. It is painted, it is primed, sanded, and 100 years old right there. Okay? put new mini blinds in and I will replace that glass. I did not paint this and I did this. You can see the difference. Okay. Now I'm going to take this spray foam and I'm going to shake it up and I'm going to put it inside this crack and this crack. Okay. I'm going to put spray foam in all of this stuff right here. Maybe this over here and this right over here.